Hello guys, good morning. So guys, today in this session, we are going to start the second part of the substitution reaction. And uh, the second part of substitution reaction and that is SN2 reaction. Okay, so if you remember last class, we have discussed about SN1 reaction, right? SN1 reaction, we have discussed that there is the reaction is of two steps. First step involves the formation of carbocation, right? And in the second step, the nucleophile. Nucleophile is anything that is negatively charged or neutral molecule which has lone pair present on it okay like water nhc etc okay so in the second step the nucleophile attacks on the carbocation and we get the product okay this is what we have discussed in sn2 reaction we have also discussed the effect of the effect of solvent you know substrate the effect of solvent we have discussed we have discussed the effect of substrate we have also di if, uh, discussed the nucleophilicity order right we have also discussed the nucleophiles okay all these factors affects the substitution reaction okay these factors affect substitution reaction sn1 as well as sn2 both correct if you look at the factor uh, you know the solvent factor in the solvent factor, we have discussed that SN2 reaction is favored by polyaprotic solvent. Okay, polyaprotic solvents are those solvents in which there is no active hydrogen present. Means what? Hydrogen is not attached with hydrogen is not attached with the electronegative element that is oxygen, nitrogen, etc. Okay, these things we already discussed. So, let us understand what is SN2 reaction, right? And what is the difference between SN1 and SN2? Okay, so write down the heading SN2 reaction. Like SN1, that is nucleophilic substitution first order reaction. Similarly, this one is nucleophilic. substitution second order reaction nucleophilic substitution and two stands for the order of the reaction that is second order reaction you don't have to think about order over here okay that is a part of chemical kinetics so that we'll discuss in class 12 they won't ask any questions based on this okay in kvv you don't have to think about this. What is order and all? Okay, so just let it be. Now look at this reaction. If I write down one general reaction here of SN2 type, we have a nucleophile, right? Nucleophile and a substrate. Substrate is alkyl group and a leaving group attached over here, right? So what happens in this? This is suppose we have delta negative and delta positive charge here. Delta negative and delta positive. So this nucleophile is attracted towards the positive charge species like this. So this nucleophile wants to attack onto this carbon atom, which has a partial positive charge. Okay. And what this uh, nucleophile want? This want that this leaving group goes out and, and this will make a bond with this carbon atom over here. Right. So we'll get a transition state over here. 
transition state is this where this nucleophile is trying to attach with this alkyl group and leaving group is trying to go out this is a transition state we get okay this is a transition state transition state is the intermediate state of any reaction transition state is the intermediate stage of any reaction okay means these two reactants react and before forming the product we get a complex compound right which is highly unstable right complex compound that we call it as transition state if there is condition sufficient condition that this transition state can convert into the product and this will convert into product which is this finally this bond forms and leaving group goes out this is the product we get okay now i have written this in two step this comes over here this comes over here but actually the reaction is single step reaction means this we won't show in any reaction overall the reaction what will write nu minus plus rl this converts into nur and l minus go out single step reaction i have written this transition state to make you understand but it is not a two step reaction okay got it so this is one thing now one more example in this you see suppose we have a substrate which is this uh, we have carbon carbon attached with a leaving group with this is a molecule we have substrate right and one nucleophile we have here this nucleophile attacks on this carbon right and we get a transition state here right the transition state is this these three atoms or molecules becomes into the same plane and this side we have nu and this side we have leaving group okay so when you look at this the carbon is is no tends to form five bonds here 1 2 3 4 5 five bonds here correct which is not possible right that's why this transition state forms for a fraction you cannot even imagine this forms and this breaks down into the product or the reactant itself okay so this is not possible hence it is highly unstable structure okay it is highly unstable structure okay so this converts into finally this converts into this bond goes out and the nucleophile attacks from the back side carbon x y this is this is the product we get plus l minus goes out So this is SN two reaction. Okay. Now, what is the properties, the characteristics of this reaction? You see, characteristics of this reaction. First of all, it is a single step. single step reaction okay order of the reaction is two okay there's no carbocation formation
no carbocation formation okay rate of the reaction directly proportional to the leaving group ability leaving group ability and we can also say it is inversely proportional to the bulkiness of x y and z okay bulkiness of x y and z what is the meaning of this bulkiness of x y and z x y z if it is bulky hey right, this x y z if it is bulky group then this will not let the nucleophile attack on the carbon atom because of hindrance it provides hindrance to this nucleophile okay and hence this attack of nucleophile is difficult and the rate of the reaction decreases okay rate of the reaction is also directly proportional to is also directly proportional to the strength and concentration mainly strength and concentration of nucleophile a strong nucleophile can attack on the carbon atom easily that's why more tendency to attack mode will be the rate of reaction this one you see the last one that i have written let's see one example on this suppose we have two reaction that is ch3o minus and this uh, reacts with ch3cl sn2 reaction we are considering okay and the second one is pho minus plus ch3cl sn2 reaction we are considering okay if you consider the product here the product will be this attacks onto this carbon and this chlorine goes out this attacks onto this carbon and this chlorine goes out the product is ch3 o ch3 plus cl minus goes out in this here we get ph o c s 3 plus c l minus goes out in this also now the point is which one a and b which one has higher rate for this reaction see both the reaction you see the difference is here c s 3 o minus and ph o minus so because of this nucleophile only we can compare the rate of the reaction in this case right because this is same this is same this only affect the rate of the reaction so we consider the nucleophiles so look at the two nucleophile here the nucleophile are ch3o minus and pho minus pho minus is this we have a benzene ring and this one we know ch3 has plus i effect releases electron and this has minus m effect this phenyl group shows so it withdraws electron towards its side right so here what happens in this case the electron density on oxygen atom is less electron density on oxygen atom is less correct less in comparison to this here the electron density is more oxygen has more electron density more electron density means it can easily attack onto this carbon atom okay on this carbon atom so what happens here 
this has more tendency to attack hence the rate of first reaction a is more than to that of b that is how we compare the rate of the reaction okay the next property of this reaction is it is favors in polar aprotic solvent polar aprotic solvent okay it leads to walden inversion walden inversion walden inversion means the configuration of an optically active compound r becomes s or s becomes r the change in configuration is inversion and this we call it as walden inversion or umbrella in inversion right this last point this walden inversion it is valid for optically active compound for optically active substrate otherwise there is no sense of talking about this walden inversion okay so this is all about sn2 okay sn1 sn2 we have discussed one general comparison you should know one general comparison you should know that sn1 and sn2 this both are competitive reaction both are competitive reaction means in any reaction both competes with each other in order to form the product it's not like in one reaction only sn1 is possible we can say sn1 is uh, you know the we get product major product according to sn1 and we also say we can also say that the tendency for the reaction to go under sn2 is less it is not zero but it is less similarly in sn2 reaction the tendency for the reaction to go under sn1 is less right so sn1 what happens if you try to recall the last class we have discussed sn1 reaction is it is uh, uh, what we can say it is uh, formation of carbocation takes place into this right so it leads to the formation of carbocation first of all and in this one there is no carbocation that is a basic difference so it depends upon the substrate actually so if the substrate can give an stable carbocation right if the substrate substrate can give stable carbocation then the reaction goes under sn1 reaction if other things are same right if other things are same the reaction goes under sn1 reaction okay if the carbocation is not stable then it goes under sn2 i'll discuss this with some example okay so for example you see if you have alkyl halide if you have alkyl halide so alkyl halide for example you see we can take a ch3 c ch3 ch3 cl another one we can take ch3 ch cl ch3 ch3 
CH2, C, these three compounds you come back. If you look at these three compounds, okay, so this carbon attached to three carbon atom, so it is tertiary alkyl halide, 3D. This one is secondary alkyl halide, 2 degree. This one is primary alkyl halide, 1 degree. Okay, 3 degree, 2 degree, 1 degree. Now, we know that 3 degree carbocation is more stable than 2 degree and 1 degree because of the hypoconjugation effect of the sulfur hydrogen. So the carbocation forms over here, if you see, uh, the carbocation that forms in the first case is if it forms, then it will form this one. This is the carbocation it forms. And in the second case, the carbocation is CS3 hold twice, CH positive charge, and it is CH3, CH2 positive charge in the third case. So number of alpha hydrogen, if you look at here, that would be nine. Number of alpha hydrogen here, that would be six. Number of alpha hydrogen here, that would be three. Okay. So due to hyperconjugation, the stability order is this without any doubt. More alpha hydrogen, more stability. Right. So since the stability order for carbocation is what? We have already discussed it in GOC. That is three degree, two degree, and one degree. This is the stability order. So if you have three degree alkyl halide, this has main major tendency to go under SN1 reaction because it is it gives stable carbocation. One degree carbocation is not that stable. So primary alkyl halide goes under SN2 reaction, mostly. If other you know conditions are same. Okay. Okay, so this thing you can uh, keep in mind. Three degree goes under SN1 and one degree goes under SN2. Like I said, these are competitive reactions. Okay, so it's in, in three degree also, there will be a little bit tendency of SN2, but that won't give you the major product. Hence, we say that it goes under SN1 reaction. Okay. One degree goes under SN2, Still, they have little tendency to go under SN1, but major product is according to SN2, hence SN1 we are neglecting. Okay, but what about this 2 degree and 2 degree carbocation? Sorry, 2 degree alkyl halide. 2 degree alkyl halide, 2 degree alkyl halide can go under SN1 or SN2 both. But this depends upon, this depends upon the solvent present into this. SN1 possible when the solvent is solvent is polar protic. Polar protic then SN1. SN2 when the solvent is polar aprotic. Polar aprotic. Example of polar aprotic solvent, we have DMSO. It will be written in the question. DMSO. DMSO stands for dimethyl dimethyl sulfoxide. Dimethyl sulfoxide. Okay. And that is S double bond O. So this is methyl group here. Methyl group here. So dimethyl sulfoxide is DMSO. Okay. It is polar aprotic because there is no hydrogen present to this oxygen atom. That's why it is polar aprotic. Polar protic is any solvent you can take. Water is polar aprotic solvent, oxygen hydrogen bond. Alcohol is like CS3OH methanol. 
this polar aprotic solvent okay cs3 white bond there are many examples like this okay this one we can have ccl4 also polar aprotic right benzene also polar aprotic solvent okay so there are many examples of this too. so in case of second degree uh, or secondary alkyl halide you have to be a little bit careful okay depending upon the condition you will get the answer according to the uh, mechanism whether it is sn1 or sn2 but always keep that in mind that in the option you will get you will have one of the options according to sn1 and one of the option according to sn2 so you have to be very careful that what is the solvent given over Okay, let's see this example. Uh, suppose we have uh, a compound, say CCl, CS3, 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 and this is, uh, you know, it is reacting with. A nucleophile. Suppose we have OH minus, and and the solvent we are taking is H two O. H two O. In this one, in this one, the solvent I am taking here. Is CCl4 OH minus with CCl4 strong nucleophile OH minus, okay, and CCl4. Okay, so this reaction. Is also SN1 because it is three degree. This is also SN1, three degree. The product of the reaction would be COH. The product is same here. The product is same, but the path is different. Okay. Now the path is also same here. The point I am trying to make is what we are taking different solvent here, but then also the mechanism is SN one since it is three degree. Okay, but here the SN one tendency rate, if you compare here, rate if you compare of the formation of product A and B, rate of formation of A. And rate of formation of B, if you compare, A will have more rate because the solvent is polar protic here, and polar protic solvent favors SN one reaction. This is polar protic. And this is polar aprotic. so difference of solvent we have then we write down the order with respect to solvent polar protic more rate towards sn1 reaction hence this is uh, no a has more rate over here suppose if you have primary alkyl halide CS3Cl with OH minus and H2. Okay, then CS3Cl with OH minus with uh, suppose we have again DMSO. Then the product is CS3OH. And this is also CS three OH. Mechanism is again here. We have SN two. Why? Because this is one degree, one degree. So this is also SN two. 
You say solvent is polar protic, but still it is SN2 because it is one degree. Product is same. Rate if you have to compare. So rate of A here is less than to the rate of B because B is what? B is polar aprotic favors SN2 reaction. Okay, if nucleophile is different, like in this case, you see, suppose we have CH3Cl plus CH3 CH2OH. Okay, CH3Cl, CH3CH2O minus. Okay, so here you see some solvent we are taking, same solvent we are taking here. Yeah? Solvent is not the you know, constraint here, same solvent. Okay, obviously if you change the solvent also here, then it depends. Okay, that which one, it, then it will be factual actually. You cannot compare in that case. Because nucleophile also you are changing, solvent also you are changing. Okay, so one thing must be common. Then only we can compare based on the uncommon part given in the reaction. Okay, so now when you look at this nucleophile, so this one is a better nucleophile. Better nucleophile. Why? Because it's charged, negative charge is present. So it has more tendency to attack here. Right. Here also we have lone pair, but there is no charge over here. Because of lone pair, it behaves as a nucleophile. But this has lone pair, and negative charge also, three lone pairs this oxygen has over here. So you can also compare more lone pair here, more tendency to attack. Hence, it is a better nucleophile. So better nucleophile, you'll get some product here. That product would be, would be an ether. That is CS3, O, CS2, CS3. O attacks onto this and we'll get the product. And here also we'll get the same thing. CS3, O, CH2, CS3. H plus goes out and here Cl minus goes out. Sorry. Yeah, Cl minus goes out. And H plus combines with Cl minus forms HCl here. Forms HCl. But this is not the you know, important one. The important thing is that which one has a better rate over here. Okay. So rate if you compare rate of the reaction A and the rate of the product B, product A and product B, right, B gives produced by a better nucleophile. So rate of B is more than to that of A. Some more uh, question you see to compare the rate of SN2. Okay, we have different alkyl line. Okay, iodine is a better living group. Better living group. All these things you can take as an information. Okay, however, we have discussed it before also that order of the living group. But for you, you're doing it first time, right? So you should take it as the information. Okay, this happens like this. This is a better living group. This is a poor living group. These things you can understand this way. Okay. At least twice and or thrice you need to do this, then only you will be able to get it. Okay. In the first time, you will get only 40%, 50% of the things, not more than that. Okay. So twice, thrice before the exam, you have to do. So this one is a better living group. So order of the rate would be this. Better living group can go out easily, and hence more will be the rate of reaction.
this one if you compare when alkyl halide attached directly with the ring okay benzene ring we call it as aryl halide general name aryl halide this molecule particularly this one is aryl chloride okay general name is the general name is aryl halide okay now aryl halide the carbon and halogen bond in this the carbon and halogen bond is difficult to break because of of partial double bond characteristics because of the partial double bond characteristics okay this pi electron the lone pair that we have here it is actually in resonance with the ring if you see this comes over here this goes over here right pi sigma lone pair the conjugation hence we develop here a partial double bond characteristics so because of this partial double bond characteristics the carbon halogen bond is strong right if you look at the strength of the bond then carbon carbon single bond is you know the strength is least then we have double bond and then we have triple bond this is the strength order we have of the bond single bond double bond and triple bond so if we have a partial double bond characteristics here so it is stronger than the carbon halogen single bond which is present over here you see in, in this case here there is no resonance we don't have partial double bond characteristics here right so aryl halide the bond is stronger here the bond is weak and since the bond is stronger it is difficult to break this bond and when it is when it is difficult to break this bond this chlorine has less tendency to go out as a leaving group right so in this case we can say what aryl halide the halogens are a poor leaving group in case of aryl halide right not in general particularly in this case right hence a poor leaving group okay you must be thinking few minutes back we were talking about that the halogens are a good leaving group now i'm saying it's a poor leaving group that's what the organic chemistry is okay you cannot generalize things over here everything will have some exceptions here and there okay like in this case it happens this way in this case it happens this way right generally in most of the cases halogens are a good leaving group but in case of aryl halide it is not okay so here it is a poor living group this one is a good living group better living group means can go under sn2 reaction easily hence the order of sn2 reaction is this okay this one you see in this molecule you see what is the difference we have we have to compare sn2 order right the difference in this two molecule is what the difference is this methyl group the position of this methyl group it is on this carbon which is attached to the chlorine hence here what happens suppose you have a nucleophile and here the nucleophile has tendency to attack on this carbon and here the nucleophile has tendency to attack on this carbon which is attached with the halogen but since we have 
one methyl group present over here. Here you see what happens, you have two hydrogen. Here we have one methyl group instead of one hydrogen. So this methyl group produces more repulsion to this uh, nucleophile. It is relative basically. Here you see the repulsion of the two hydrogen atom to this nucleophile is lesser than the repulsion of this methyl group and hydrogen present over here. So we can say here, here we have more steric crowding. more steric crowding and hence the repulsion is more over here less rate towards SN2 reaction so the rate of SN2 reaction in this case would be this okay this one you see This alkyl halide, this one is one degree alkyl halide and this one is two degree alkyl halide. And we know one degree alkyl halide has more tendency to go under SN2 reaction. Hence the order of reaction. Okay, this question you see, in this we need to write down the product. We have Br here, one Br present here and we have one methyl group attached to it. We are using OH- as the nucleophile, only one equivalent of it. Means only one OH minus we have, not more than one, only one equivalent of it. Then what would be the product in this one? Okay. I hope you have done it. So since you have only one equivalent of this nucleophile OH minus, obviously this is a nucleophile we have. So this nucleophile has tendency to attack onto the carbon here or here. Since only one equivalent we have, so it will either attack on this carbon or this will attack on this carbon. Depends upon which carbon, which alkyl group is more reactive towards SN2 reaction. So how do we compare that? Easily, if you see this carbon atom, this carbon atom is secondary because it has with two carbon. This carbon atom is tertiary, three degree. Three degree, right? So, if you are considering SN2, this is what we are considering. You are not considering SN1 here. I am asking you to write down the product towards SN2 reaction here. So if you are considering SN2, then this OH minus 
attacks on the less hindered carbon atom which is 2d and then this br minus goes out and the product here is this br will be as it is and here we get oh since we have only one equivalent of it. okay but suppose the same reaction we are considering nothing is mentioned nothing is mentioned and we have one equivalent of oh minus one equivalent and solvent we are taking h2 water is the solvent we are taking okay so since this water is a polar protic solvent this is what polar protic solvent and hence this favors sn1 reaction so sn1 reaction again you have to compare secondary or tertiary where the sn1 reaction is more obviously tertiary so what happens the product here first we get a carbocation this br will be as it is okay first we get a carbocation and this carbocation in the next step the nucleophile oh minus attacks onto the carbocation and we get the product here which is this So this reaction is, since it is H2O, it is SN1 reaction we are considering. Okay. So this is how we'll go for this kind of question. Okay. If sol solvent is not mentioned, SN2 is given. If solvent is mentioned, then the mechanism will be SN2. We'll get this product carbocation and then the attack of nucleophile. If this carbocation is forming, so we'll always try to get the most stable carbon for the given molecule. The most stable carbocation will form. Okay, this one you see. OH minus one equivalent of it. SN2. I'm giving you as in product. So what happens? Obviously, it is aryl halide. This part you see. So this bond has partial double bond characteristics. Double bond character. Difficult to break. This one has single bond, can break easily. So this OH minus this will attack onto this carbon atom, and this goes out as a living group. SN2, no carbocation formation. So the product here is
This is the problem. So overall, so what have we discussed? We have discussed this, that in any reaction, there are chances of both SN1 and SN2. Hence, both SN1 and SN2 reactions are competitive reactions, okay? Depending upon the substrate, whether it is primary or tertiary, depending upon the nucleophile, whether it is you know, weak nucleophile or a strong nucleophile, depending upon the solvent, whether it is polar protic or polar aprotic, and hindrance and all. Based on all these factors, we can analyze and conclude whether the reaction goes under SN1 or SN2 reaction. SN2 reaction, again, I'm telling you, it is a single step reaction, right? No carbocation forms into this one. SN1 is a multi-step, two-step reaction. First step, carbocation forms. And the second step, the nucleophile attacks on the most stable carbocation. So whenever the carbocation forms in any reaction, okay, so we always try to get the more stable carbocation, okay, by hydride or methyl shift. Last class, I have discussed on this, what is hydride and methyl shift. We haven't gone, gone into so depth of it. We only, you know, consider the facts of, or, you know, the portions of KVPY. However, again, I'm telling you that the syllabus is not defined, but all these things that we are discussing, it is based on the previous year paper of KVP. Okay, so always keep that in. Now, in general, what we can write, suppose we have the last thing we'll see. Suppose we have a nucleophile. We'll have a solvent and product product by means what would be the possible mechanism if the nucleophile is neutral if the nucleophile is neutral that is weak right or the nucleophile is negatively charged so I've already discussed the negatively charged nucleophile are a strong nucleophile. OH minus is stronger than H2O. CH3O minus is stronger than CH3OH. Okay, so neutral is weak, negatively charged are the strong one. So neutral nucleophile plus we have polar protic solvent. Polar protic solvent. Nucleophile is neutral. We have polar protic solvent. This definitely leads to the carbocation formation and hence we get the product by SN1 mechanism. If we have negative charged nucleophile, a strong one, and the solvent is polar aprotic, then this won't wait for the carbocation to form. It will attack directly on the polar Partially, char partially positive charged carbon atom and the product will gain by SN2 mechanism. Got it? So these kind of, you know, a comparison you must know. Well, last example you see here. Suppose we have a substrate, this one. This entire concept is very dynamic, actually. We cannot generalize anything. Okay, it's, it's, it's depends upon what we are taking. Now we see this. Okay, if this form, this molecule forms a carbocation, what it forms? This Cl minus goes out and we get a CH2 plus here plus Cl minus. Right, leaving group Cl minus. This is the carbocation. And if you look at this carbocation, 
this carbocation is stable carbocation through resonance of this ring right resonance it is stable carbocation but at the same time this uh, carbon is what this halide is what it is 1 degree halogen primary halide primary halide because attached with only one carbon so you see we have discussed that the primary halide goes under sn2 if you look at this particular information then the mechanism should be sn2 because it is primary halide but if you look at the stability of carbocation the mechanism should be sn1 and we know sn1 is possible when there is tendency of forming stable carbocation and this carbocation is quite stable so which you know mechanism is possible over here right so in this case if you take in this case it depends upon what nucleophile you are taking right if the nucleophile is weak weak nucleophile then the formation of carbocation is possible and the mechanism is sn1 here because weak nucleophile less tendency to attack right so if the nucleophile is weak you are taking nu minus weak since it is weak so this will wait for the charge to develop then it will get attracted towards this it won't get attracted towards the partial positive charge since it is weak but if it is a strong nucleophile suppose the nucleophile is strong then it is strong enough to attack on the partial positive charge of this carbon atom then this won't wait for this bond to break and forms a carbocation and hence the mechanism is what mechanism is sn2 in this case but if the nucleophile is weak the mechanism is sn1 for the reaction okay so like i said this two uh things are very dynamic depending upon the molecule substrate nucleophile solvent we can decide whether it is sn1 or sn2 this requires a lot of practice for the understanding of these two reactions to get the right answer it requires a lot of practice with practice only you will understand obviously certain things you have to keep in mind that this is in this case this kind of things happens the reaction would be this and product according to this reaction is this okay so this is it for sn1 and sn2 next class we'll see some examples some problems on this how to solve problems based on sn1 and sn2 and some more you know uh, good examples we'll discuss okay so thanks for today take care bye bye